Madam President, Madam Executive Director, fellow speakers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. In the World Business Council, I head up the department that enables a high quality integration of sustainability related topics into key business decision functions, such as risk management, strategy, treasury, investor relations, and others. So that more sustainable choices can be made when management teams want to. While at the same time we work with capital market players, standard setters and regulators to enable the recognition and valuation of sustainable business behavior so that sustainable business performance is rewarded with a lower cost of capital. But before joining the World Business Council seven months ago, um, I have been in Booking.com's leadership team for many years. Um, and it's actually great to be back to engage with you, the accommodation providers, the destination management companies, and other actors in the tourism industry. I've always enjoyed our time together. Ask anyone what they would do if they would win the lottery, and the answer typically should be, or would be, I would travel more. Exploring the world is an amazing experience. To be able to connect with new people, new cultures, while at the same time enjoying architecture, art and cuisine. Or to discover sea life in Asia, wildlife in Africa, mountain regions in Europe, or simply enjoying time away with the children in a beachside resort. Traveling offers amazing value for everyone. Yet, as you all know and care about, as you are here today, we find ourselves in a place where this amazing value is under pressure. Extreme weather events caused by the climate crisis, the related and increasing nature loss and extinction of species, the mounting inequality are challenging many, if not all, of the destinations that either in part or fully depend on tourism. The public perception has recently started to significantly move towards accepting the need to adapt. But the complexity of our world is repeatedly slapping us in the face. The Ukraine war, the resulting food crisis, inflation, the anti-ESG movement, greenwashing allegations are all making it harder, not easier, to collaborate and to align on the solutions we need. Many are calling upon our leadership to collaborate and take, tackle the poly crisis head on. And we should, together. At the same time, it seems that not all stakeholders can agree, that not all stakeholders share the urgency or are willing to carry the investment. And therefore, I want to offer two different perspectives. Many years ago, in 1999, the promise of the internet was driving technology and e-commerce stocks to unseen heights, only to crash down a year later, when investors realized that it might take years before those promises would materialize. The reason for this? Well, let's do a quick poll. Who here in the room thinks that the internet and digital has had a profound impact on the way that your organization creates value? Show me your hands. Keep your hand up, please. Who here in the room believes that your organization is really good at the internet? Only a few hands remain. And this is the reason why the stocks came crashing down. Everyone realized that building a good digital competency takes years. The potential value creation was there and visible to everyone. But I would argue that only in the past few years, because of the pandemic, the internet has really started to deliver on those promises from the 90s. That's 30 years later. This is because building the necessary connective tissue for organizations to collaborate, like data sharing standards, privacy laws, data systems, and so on, took years to develop. You know, back then, 
management would say, the internet, yeah, we're doing it. We've hired a very smart guy who does the internet. He sits in a room over there, while the business continued doing what they did without changing. You see similarities with sustainability. How maybe companies are saying they are doing it, but in reality, they are not changing much in how they operate. Do you recognize how sustainability is maybe done by a team somewhere else? How it is not fully integrated into your organization's strategy and execution in every way? At the same time, we know that many transformations to your operating environment are happening today in an accelerated pace. The transition of our energy systems towards renewable, the transition towards nature-positive business models and the restoration of biodiversity, the transition of plastics use and the transition towards circularity for large sectors like the built environment, mobility, chemicals and many others. These transformations are real. They are big and they are happening today and present either a risk or an opportunity for your business depending on how you respond to them. Last week I met a group of CEOs of large multinationals and we talked about how their sustainable product and service portfolios are benefiting from increased customer preference, how their focus on energy efficiency and energy avoidance are creating significant net cost savings, how their work with their suppliers to mitigate negative value chain effects drove innovations and supplier loyalty, and how their sustainability positioning is starting to become a significant magnet for talent. They mentioned rising investor demand, questions and support. Now, the key to unlocking these benefits, we all agreed, is to start building the competencies required. The competencies to identify, measure, mitigate and collaborate on the negative externalities that your business or sector unintentionally creates. By integrating sustainability considerations into your decision making, let me see where I was, <laughs> you are preparing your business for transformations towards net zero, nature positive, circular, equitable, and hence for a sustainable competitive advantage. The second perspective I want to offer is of a growing momentum of government, civil society and business collaborations that is putting actionable solutions in place. Typically, companies go through a constant process of setting a target making a plan, executing on the plan, measuring the results, reporting back to your stakeholders, and then repeat. Let's call this a corporate accountability system. And when we think of various sustainability-related topics, we are seeing maturing standards, methods and tools that enable a corporate accountability system, for instance, for carbon performance. Leading companies have started their decarbonization, they have set a science-based target initiative, they have set a science-based target using the greenhouse gas protocol and the science-based target initiative called SBTI. They have created a transition plan that includes the activities and timelines needed to deliver their targets. They are working with their value chains to put in place proper scope one, two and three carbon accounting using pre-competitive collaborative platforms such as the World Business Council. And finally, they are preparing to report back to stakeholders and financial institutions using a global standard set by the ISSB, the International Sustainability Standards Board, um, which, uh, which uh, recommendations will come out in June this year. They will include the framework of the Task Force for Sustainability and uh, for Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, the TCFD. And I'm mentioning all these acronyms, not to confuse you, but to show you which organizations and which guidance to go to if you want to get started on the journey towards a carbon-performing uh, business model. The solutions are out there, but you need to engage. It's quite clear that if it took 30 years to become okay at digital, 
probably the same thing might be true for sustainability. But we don't have that time. We don't have 30 years. And consumer demand, systems demand, regulatory demand, and competitive pressure of those who are quicker will be real and will be felt. That's not to scare you all, because I think it's a huge opportunity in itself. The, the energy transformation itself represents an enormous, unfathomable uh, economic opportunity for everybody who engages and benefits. In this area, companies should also leverage developments like our Partnership for Carbon Transparency, or which is building a methodology and an interoperable data sharing platform for the carbon product footprint of suppliers across a company's scope 3 emissions inventory. And to develop the same for assessing and collecting data on nature-related end-to-end value chain impacts. Nature-related topics, like mentioned by Madam Executive Director, like land use, water, air, ocean, and also biodiversity, are all relevant for destinations and the tourism industry, as you well know. What we are seeing is that an accountability system for nature is following the carbon trajectory. With the launch of the Task Force for Nature-Related Financial Disclosures, short TNFD, the development of the Natural Capital Protocol, and the Science-Based Targets Initiative for Nature, short SBTN. These tools and methods enable your journey from a do-no-harm approach towards a full, just and regenerative business model. As a destination and as a sector, you can build the pre-competitive platforms together with UNWTO that enable a dialogue with the finance community to unlock the transition finance opportunities that exist. There is investor demand for protecting and restoring nature. There is investor demand for the development of renewable energy solutions, and there are opportunities to achieve zero waste to landfill by combining the purchasing power at the destination level. As an individual company, you need to promote your equity story. That is the story you tell to your investors and stakeholders on what you are doing and how sustainability considerations have, have become a strategic part of your future competitive advantage. So that your investors and capital partners understand how your strategy allows your business to adapt potentially better and benefit potentially better from the transformations ahead. This will unlock an economic incentive for change. So let me summarize. There are several significant sectoral transformations that are real and underway. It all starts with a simple accountability system. Set an ambition, make a plan, execute, report back. There are large benefits for those who build the competencies to respond and to adapt. You need to collaborate. There is help available and tell your story. Because if you get it right, you will be able to materialize three benefits. You'll be able to successfully respond to the risks, you'll be able to benefit from the transformations, and you will show business leadership and create value for your communities, your customers, and for future generations. So start today. Please do come talk to me afterwards if you want to learn more. Thanks for your attention and have a great conference.